In the middle of a lake, Kevin suddenly resurfaces and swims out as it's revealed he isn't from this reality. He walks down the road and activates a bracelet to jump into another world, desperate to find his wife. This all started over a decade ago. Kevin loses his job at the bank, so he goes to a bar to drink and forget. Here he's approached by Molly, who was dared by her friends to talk to him. It starts as a prank but the two quickly hit it off and start dating, eventually getting married and having a child. Unfortunately the couple loses their son and this puts lots of strain on their marriage. Kevin is stuck in a desk job he hates, and Molly has become an alcoholic. One day, Kevin's boss gets tired of Kevin's attitude and tells him to take the rest of the day off, throwing a hint that he may be fired soon. Then Kevin gets stuck in traffic and calls Molly, which ends up in another argument. While he's distracted, a vehicle hits Kevin's car and he passes out. Moments later, Kevin wakes up and sees people running around the car on fire while a strange man checks on him, only to pass out again. A few more moments pass and this time Kevin wakes up in an alley with the same guy watching over him, who introduces himself as the benefactor. Kevin keeps on hearing a ringing in his ears and when he stands up, he's so dizzy he almost falls. He's about to pass out again so the benefactor punches him to snap him out of it. Once the ringing disappears, the benefactor says he has a job offer for Kevin, mentioning he may be unemployed soon. Kevin is creeped out by a stranger knowing this and tries to leave, but when he reaches the street, there isn't a single person or car around. Next, he thinks of calling Molly or the police, but the benefactor mentions it won't work and that this isn't the first time they've done this. Finally snapping, Kevin pushes the benefactor against the wall and demands to know where everyone went, but the benefactor says it's Kevin who has moved. Afterward Kevin is dragged into a restaurant, where everyone including the owners and the waitress Tina seem to be scared of the benefactor. At that moment Kevin realizes that the benefactor is actually Satan, and when Tina brings the food, the benefactor makes her sit next to him by threatening her with a knife. The benefactor explains how each choice we make creates countless realities where a different option was chosen and that his power is to shift people, meaning he sends them to other universes. In the case of Kevin, he's brought him to this place and in exchange he sent Molly a husband that actually cares. The Molly of this reality was also sent away after Kevin gifted her a special necklace. Kevin refuses to believe any of this and asks for proof, so the benefactor uses a bracelet to send Tina into another dimension. Her parents fall to their knees in grief as a shocked Kevin steps away from the table. The benefactor insists he has a job offer for Kevin, in every reality he has a shifter to do his devil work while he's universe jumping, and he wants Kevin to be one of them. In fact the Kevins of other realities have already accepted, and they have everything they want in their lives, they only had to sell their souls. The benefactor even offers Kevin to give him back a perfect Molly, however Kevin responds by praying. At first the benefactor finds it amusing, mentioning how God won't ever care, but eventually he becomes angry at being ignored and disappears. Feeling lost and confused, Kevin apologizes to Tina's family and goes to the street, where he starts learning more about this reality. This version of society is living under a totalitarian regime, and officers wearing futuristic armor patrol the streets. When some cops see Kevin, he gets scared and runs away. Time starts to pass and Kevin has to adapt to this new society and learn its history. War and hate took over this society to the point of almost destroying the world. One day the shifters showed up, working in secret to get rid of anyone they considered problematic like politicians, pastors, and soldiers. Millions of people disappeared and peace was restored until the benefactor came to this world as well, and the few remaining leaders gave him control. Now this world has no hope and no faith, also religion is illegal. It's been five years since Kevin was brought here. He's perpetually sick and known as the Kevin who refused, so he uses a fake name to work for a construction company. His only friend is Gabriel, who knows the truth about him. Kevin writes any Bible passages he can remember on a typewriter and distributes them through Gabriel in secret as a way to rebel against the no praying law. In his free time, Kevin likes to help as many people as possible, wanting to make a better place out of this depressing city. Most of the world is destroyed by war and most people are poor while the benefactor's secret police rules the streets with brutality. By wandering around the city being kind, Kevin gets to see the little beautiful moments that remind him of Molly and keep up his faith in God. Unfortunately sometimes those memories transform into nightmares that show him losing Molly and his son over and over. Kevin also likes to visit the theater to experience something called Vika viewing, which is a live feed showing the viewer alternate realities. The owner of the theater is Russo, who has been looking for his lost cat for four years. There's a chair in front of the screen, and Kevin sits with a remote control that allows them to change the reality he's seeing. His goal is to find where the benefactor has sent Molly. Most of the time he only gets to see how brutal other realities also are, but one afternoon, Kevin gets emotional when he finally sees Molly again. In that world, she's a single mother working as a nurse. Crying, Kevin tries to touch the screen, but the recording goes off so he has to step back and respect the boundaries. Soon his time is over and he rushes to Russo to ask for more, but his schedule is fully booked so Russo tells him to come back in a few days. On his way back home, Kevin sees lots of people protesting at the bridge because the cops won't allow anyone to cross into the south end. It turns out that the area has been scheduled for demolition, meaning many citizens will lose their homes. 
Suddenly a man jumps over the barrier and past the cops to reach the middle of the bridge where he suddenly disappears, meaning he was a shifter. The crowd begins panicking and pushing back against the cops, causing the officers to throw gas bombs and open fire to get them all to leave. As everyone runs away, Kevin is cornered by a cop who almost shoots him, but Gabriel drags him away just in time. The duo hides inside an old factory and Gabriel tells Kevin that God has abandoned them. Afterward Kevin goes to the grocery store and while waiting in line, he sees a kid walk away from his mother. He immediately goes after him but when he walks around the shelves the kid is gone, which triggers awful memories of the time he and Molly lost their son in the supermarket. Thankfully the boy appears again next to his mother, but Kevin can't help scolding the mother for not noticing the kid was gone. Everyone in the store looks at him as if he was crazy, so Kevin panics and runs away. As he runs through the streets, Kevin thinks again about the time he lost his son. He and Molly turned around for two seconds to say hello to some friends, and that was enough for their kid to disappear. They looked for him all over the building to no avail. Sometime later, the police informed the couple that they found the child's backpack but not him, so it was safe to assume he was dead. Afterward Molly and Kevin fought all the time. Molly also drank a lot while Kevin escaped to a support group. One day he tried gifting Molly a necklace that said he lives as a symbol of hope, but Molly found it distasteful. She wanted Kevin to grieve with her and move on, but Kevin still thought there was a chance they could find their son. The ensuing argument caused them to separate. In the present, Kevin is grabbing some alcohol from a trash can when he's seen by his neighbor Rajit, who invites him to have dinner with his family. Kevin is having a very nice evening when suddenly Rajit reveals he knows Kevin's real name because he overheard Gabriel say it. Rajit also knows Kevin has been sharing Bible verses, so to thank him, he makes his girl sing a sweet little tune. Kevin is so touched by this ray of hope that he cries and when Rajit asks him to teach the girls, Kevin immediately agrees. That evening, Kevin shares as many stories from the Bible as he can remember. After he's done, Rajit notices Kevin has a tattoo, and Kevin explains it represents an empty tomb. It happens to match the design of Molly's necklace. At that moment a siren begins echoing through the city and people on the streets run to hide. Kevin and Rajit's family check the TV to watch an emergency broadcast announcing that the benefactor has returned. The mayor reminds the citizens that if the benefactor needs them for anything, they need to cooperate or the punishment will be death. Sometime later, Kevin returns to the theater and begins looking at the Mollies from different universes until he finds one wearing the necklace, meaning that's the one from his world who got shifted. An excited Kevin rushes to the control room to celebrate and ask for that universe's address code, and when Russo says he can't give it to him, Kevin gets rather aggressive. Russo immediately scolds him and explains he lost the connection when Kevin got off the chair, so he doesn't have the code. Kevin wants to try again yet Russo refuses, saying that even if they manage to find the same Molly which could take hours, the address is pointless if Kevin doesn't have the special bracelet, also known as Deviator. A desperate Kevin runs out until he finds Gabriel, dragging him into an alley to talk. Kevin wants Gabriel to get him a gun so he can go after the benefactor, but Gabriel reminds him weapons are illegal and trying to kill the devil is crazy. When Kevin gives him an envelope with more Bible stories and says these will be the last ones, Gabriel gives in and offers Kevin his own gun. The next day, Kevin tries to approach the area where the benefactor is visiting a restaurant to recruit his next shifter. The police have put up barriers on the streets yet crowds are forming everywhere to see the benefactor to the point some people get into fights over the closer spots. While the cops are busy dealing with those fights, Kevin sneaks around and runs into the restaurant to catch the benefactor. However to his shock, he enters his motel room instead. Confused, Kevin steps outside and sees the front of the restaurant again, where the benefactor is dining with another version of him, meaning the door is a teleporting trap. At that moment the police open fire on him and hurt Kevin's arm, so he rushes back in to hide. Whenever he peeks outside, he can see the cops waiting for him. Furious, Kevin drops the gun and starts destroying all the things in his room as he calls out God for testing him so much. When he falls to his knees to pray, the benefactor appears in the room and takes the gun before making Gabriel appear in the room too. Gabriel immediately denies knowing Kevin, so an amused benefactor makes the gun disappear and orders Gabriel to clean up the room. Then the benefactor gives a speech about how God doesn't care and offers Kevin the job again. Kevin replies by asking about his son, so the benefactor tells him to leave the room so Kevin can learn he isn't a good person. Kevin immediately rushes outside and finds the cops looking for him. Rajit tries to cover for him, only for the police to quickly shoot him down. Then the cops come after him, so Kevin runs back into the room and hides behind the bed. Gabriel doesn't move fast enough and when the officers open fire from outside, Gabriel also gets killed. When his body falls, Kevin sees a deviator on his wrist, meaning he was a shifter all along. Kevin carefully sneaks around the bed and steals the deviator, pressing some random buttons to be teleported out of there. He appears in the middle of a desert and notices that the deviator isn't working very well, so he hits it until he jumps into another universe and lands in the middle of the lake. After swimming out, he activates the deviator again and appears inside a random room where he finds some supplies to take care of his wound. When he looks around, he discovers he's in an insane asylum and that the Tina of his world is there. 
The benefactor sent her to a reality where she doesn't exist, so she's seen as insane and kept with other crazy people. Kevin tries to follow her and finds another Gabriel, who begins chasing after him with open fire. Multiple Gabriels appear in the corridors thanks to his shifter abilities, but Kevin manages to lose them all by hiding in a room. Afterward Kevin sneaks around and waits for Tina to be alone to approach her. At first she only speaks gibberish, but when she finally recognizes him, she freaks out and asks about her family, begging to be taken back. The guards immediately hold her down only to suddenly be shot by two Gabriels, who turn toward Kevin next. Fortunately Kevin manages to activate the deviator and disappears. This time he appears in a reality with a Kevin who did accept the benefactor's job and is living with luxury and any woman he wants. Main Kevin tries sneaking around, but other Kevin finds him and points a gun at him, shooting at the ceiling to make him talk. As the women run away in fear, Main Kevin reveals his face and his deviator, so a furious other Kevin opens fire to try to take it from him. At that moment Main Kevin manages to travel back to the depressing world and discovers the police has taken over the area. Luckily Rajid is still alive and before the ambulance takes him away, he gives his wife a drawing matching Kevin's tattoo plus the word hope. At that moment a woman sees Kevin and alerts the cops, who immediately begin chasing him. Kevin runs as fast as he can and makes it to the theater, where he immediately grabs the remote to start looking for Molly. By some miracle, he finds his Molly on the first try, and Russo tells him the address code while the cops burst into the building. Using the deviator, Kevin disappears just in time. In another reality, Kevin finds his Molly, who doesn't want anything to do with him. Kevin tries to say he never gave up on them and that he's changed, but it's not enough for Molly, who has already moved on and only keeps the necklace as a memento. Suddenly someone drags Kevin away by the shoulder, it's the benefactor, who brings Kevin back to the theater. Another Gabriel shoots his deviator and the benefactor brings over Tina before admitting he did shift Kevin's son, causing a furious Kevin to try to attack him. The cops immediately hold him down and the benefactor makes a final offer. Kevin must choose between going back to Molly for good or sending Tina back to her family. As Kevin hesitates, Russo is shocked to finally find his cat again, which is the sign of hope Kevin has been waiting for from God. He chooses to send Tina back to her family, and as she reunites with her loved ones, the benefactor takes Gabriel's gun to try to shoot Kevin. At that moment, a miracle blesses Kevin for his choice and sends him to the reality where Molly is a single mother and nurse. Since he's been healed up and his ring is missing, Kevin approaches this Molly in the bar like the other her did to him the first time, and they immediately hit it off. They soon start dating and Kevin starts a new life here, saying it's not his world but it is his home. Eventually he marries this Molly and he becomes a father to her daughter, they also have a child of their own. Kevin is so happy with this new family that he believes God rewarded him with the double of what he lost. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.